Hey y'all, I'm Paul Rees, an engineer with the Developer Relations team on Google ML, and this is the ML on Raspberry Pi with MediaPipe series, where you will learn about the basics of machine learning, along with how you can use Google's newest on-device machine learning tool, MediaPipe, to add useful features to your own Raspberry Pi apps. In this video, I'm going to focus on audio classification and how you can add it to your Raspberry Pi apps. Audio classification can be used for quite a few different things, including determining a music style, different animal sounds, or specific spoken words, to name just a handful. And before we really dig into how to use audio classification, we should go over how audio data works so that you have a better understanding of what's happening on your device. Two of the more common ways to visualize audio data are waveforms and spectrograms. Waveforms show sound pressure, or the difference in pressure from the sound compared to the ambient area pressure, though for our purposes, you can just think of this like volume over time. While this is kind of cool, it doesn't really give us enough of an understanding of the data to do what we want with it. For example, two similar sounds may have waveforms that look almost identical, such as a siren and a musical instrument that only plays one long drawn out note. Spectrograms, however, add frequency into the mix, giving us just enough information to be able to tell the difference between two unique sounds. When you're looking at a spectrogram, the x-axis still represents time, but the y-axis now represents frequency or pitch, while the color is representing the sound pressure. Once you have this visual representation, it turns out that audio classification happens using a lot of the same techniques that image classification uses. So let's take a look at a couple examples using the 3D spectrogram chrome experiment, which I'll link to in the video description below. If you select the harp sound, you can see how the spectrogram active areas descend as the instrument plays lower and lower notes. Whereas if you say the word right, you'll get a sound with two immediate peaks in the low and mid frequency ranges as you say right. Then you'll notice a flick of high frequency sound when you add in the t sound. What's cool about this is that even if you have different people saying the same word, you will likely get a similar enough pattern to be able to try and classify the word. Now that you have a better understanding of how to represent audio data in a visual way, Let's think about how a generic audio classification model would approach the problem. The model we will use in this video is called YAMNet, and it attempts to classify audio in segments that are 0.975 seconds in length. As audio comes in, it will accept a segment, attempt to classify it, return the result, and then move on to the next segment that has been recorded. But what if the sound we're trying to classify appears across multiple segments rather than cleanly within one? This is actually what we see on the left side of this image. That's where a concept called overlap comes in. Basically, you have two separate classification streams happening at once, but they're offset from each other to try and catch those edge cases. For example, you could have 50% overlap, meaning the second set of segments will start from the middle of the first set, and they'll have a way better chance of finding sounds that are missed by the first classification stream. With that out of the way, it's time to take a look at how you can do this on Raspberry Pi with MediaPipe Task. In this demo, I've cut out a simple wooden box on a laser cutter, then engraved a set of acrylic markers with pictures of a cat, cow, and bird. Each marker is attached to a single LED that'll light up when the Raspberry Pi has heard and classified either of those animals using an attached microphone. While this isn't anything too fancy, it was something that I had fun with, so I'm hoping you all enjoy it too. If this is something that you would like to see more of in our video series, or if there are any particular kinds of projects you would like to see as either a video or a written guide, definitely let us know in the comments, because I do look at those after these videos have been published to see what questions people have, what I can do to improve in the future, and see what sorts of content people enjoy the most. Like the previous videos, this will require a Raspberry Pi running a 64-bit operating system, plus any hardware that you need for your project. In this case, the only really necessary piece is a microphone so that the Raspberry Pi can pick up an audio stream. To start, make sure you install MediaPipe on your device with the following command. You will also need to make sure that you have a model stored on your device. There's a variety of ways you can do this, including using the wget command from the terminal that you can see here on the screen to get a stock model that has been tested already. Since I'm not using a custom model for this example, I'll use this exact command to retrieve a pre-tested default model in the same directory as my Python script. Like I mentioned a little while ago, this model is called YAMNet. And similar to other videos, I'm going to focus on the important parts here to perform classification, 
But if you want to see an entire example project, you can find the GitHub link to our official audio classification sample below. Now, let's get into a new Python file. You'll need to make sure you import this set of dependencies specific for audio classification with MediaPipe. After you have those, you can initialize your audio classifier with a set of configuration option objects. The first options object contains a few general properties that are available to all of the tasks under MediaPipe. In this example, you will just need the path for the model that you're using. The second object contains properties that are relevant to the current specific task. Some of the available options include the max number of results that you want to receive from the classifier, the minimum confidence scores that must be met before a result is returned, and a callback that will receive the results from audio classification. In this case, you will also use the audio stream running mode because this is going to use live audio data from the microphone instead of an existing file. After you have your options object configured the way that you would like for your app, you can create the classifier object that will do the majority of the ML work for you. There's also some additional things to create for recording audio data that can be used for classification. MediaPipe Task already provides an audio recorder and other useful tools, but you will need to initialize them. The values that you see at the top represent the buffer size for how much data you want to be able to queue at a time, the sample rate for your audio input, and the number of audio channels to support. One important thing to catch here is that the sample rate for your microphone might be different than what you use in the example. So if something isn't working like you would expect, definitely verify that. For example, if I use my AT2020 microphone, then I need to set the sample rate of 44,100 to make this work. After creating those values, you'll want to start recording from your device. With the recorder made, you'll want to create a new loop in your program that will start the recorder to fill in the buffer that you will use for classification. You can determine how long this loop should pause based on the length of the audio clip that MediaPipe Task Interpreter is expecting, as well as the overlap value that you want to support with a code block similar to this one. After all of that is out of the way, you will need to extract the audio data from the recorder and pass it to the asynchronous audio classifier to start getting back your results. These results will follow the same structure that we outlined in our official developer documentation. So definitely check that out to see what other use cases you might want to support. The most important part of the results for this demo is the list of classification categories and their confidence scores. There's also a timestamp provided with the results that refer to segment position in the audio clip, as there can be multiple timestamps in a returned result object. And once you've done that, you can start using them for whatever you need in your app. Earlier, I mentioned that I have a toy box that I made that will light up when it hears specific sounds. In this video, you can watch the toy light up as it hears cow, cat, and bird sounds through the attached microphone. And that's it. Like always, we're excited to see all the cool things you make. So please share them with us online and in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next video.